Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, a few weeks ago I did an episode on exposure compensation, and during that episode I mentioned that you could use a histogram to check your exposure. Well, that led to an avalanche of email and comments on our YouTube channel asking all about the histogram. And so if I could sum it all up, the question for this week is, what is a histogram and how do you use it? Well, the histogram is actually something that photographers stole from mathematicians. A histogram shows a distribution of values over a range. So let's imagine for just a minute that I am a school teacher and I want to judge my performance as a school teacher. So I would have a bunch of uh, students and I would have them on a spreadsheet or something. So it looks like Jill has an A and Billy has a C, etc. So I've written down all the names of my students and their grades. Now if I took this and put it in a histogram, I could see how those grades are distributed. So let's look at this um, applied to a chart. And in our fictitious class, we have about 20 students. And so if I put those on a chart, on the very bottom is the range. On the left, it's all the A students. And all the, on the right, it's all the failing students, or the F. So A to F on the bottom scale. And on the left-hand side is the count of how many students got each grade. For example, the A students, there were four of those. The B students, we had six. The C students, we had five, etc. And you can see how those are distributed among the class. Now, if I looked at this as a teacher and thought, hmm, not doing so well because I need more of those C, uh, D students to be B students, and I t uh, changed my teaching and those students got smarter, this graph would change. The students wouldn't change. It would just show a new reflection of how they're performing. And so we would have a new graph. Now, we can take this and apply it to photography. Well, your question is, how do we do that? Well, we don't actually count students and then uh, track their grades. What we're counting is a thing called pixels. And so if we zoomed in on an image very, very close, we would see that an image is made up of these very, very small dots called pixels. And each of those pixels have a luminance value. In other words, a value of how bright or how dark they are from zero, which is absolutely black, all the way up to 255, which is absolutely white. And so what our histogram does is it says how many pixels in our photo are absolutely black. And then it puts them on a chart. And how many of them are just above black and are dark gray. And it goes through and maps that on a histogram. So let's look at a very simple histogram that I created. If we looked at this, on the bottom we have all the black on the left and all the white on the right. And then we're counting how many pixels are in each of those values. So if we look at this, we see that uh, black has about 200 pixels and dark gray has about 500 pixels, gray has about 800, etc. And so that's how many pixels we have that have those brightness values. Now, this is a fictional uh, chart, and so I'm going to show you something that would look more realistic. So if we looked at this and we had a photo with a lot of dark in it, you can see that there are going to be more dark and black pixels than there are light and white pixels. And so our histogram would have a, it would look like it has more values on the left-hand side than the right. Or if we had a very a white photo, um, our pixel count would show that we have more light values and white values than dark values. And so there isn't really a perfect histogram. It's just a histogram that reflects what your photo looks like. Now, our histograms don't look like this. Our histograms look something like this. This is a, a histogram that I took from um, Photoshop to look real, uh, more realistic. So it doesn't have you know, every single value. But on the left-hand side, those are all the blacks. And on the uh, right-hand side, those are all the whites. And this is the distribution of pixels along that scale. Now, you're probably familiar with something that looks a little bit more like this on the back of your camera. And that's what we're going to do next, is we're going to look at a histogram and take some pictures and show you in real time how the histogram changes based on the photo. Well, to understand the histogram, I've set up a very simple setup. I have a calibration target over here. This calibration target has black, middle gray, and white. And so I'm shooting these actually in black and white mode on my Canon 7D, and then I'm remote capturing these on a Lightroom, and so you can uh, see real time what the histogram looks like. So what I've done also is I've made sure that the uh, calibration target has a black 
gray and white and that is horizontal and not vertical because it's really important to understand that the histogram is not measuring uh, in accordance to what your picture is. In other words, if you have a bunch of dark on the left hand side, it's not measuring left to right, dark to white, it's measuring how many. So if you think back to the class, we wouldn't chart how many people got A's based on where they're sitting in the class. Uh, we would just base that on the count. And so it doesn't matter which uh, way your black is, if it's on the right side or left side or top or bottom of your image, it's always going to show up on the left side of your histogram. And so just to make sure that goes in your brain, I have set this up horizontally instead of vertically. So I'm going to take my very first shot here of this uh, target and I'm filling the frame and I've got my shot. And you can see here on, the, um, on Lightroom, I'll open this up. And you can see on the left here, we have very dark areas and that corresponds to the black here. And you can see it's sort of widespread. And the first question would be, well, how come it doesn't just have a very thin mark saying this is where the black is? Well, if you look closely, this image doesn't have just black. It has a lot of values that are dark, uh, just dark pixels. And so this is the blackest of those, probably this edge right here. And this is the range of black to lighter black. And then you have sort of a gap here, and then you have this middle gray, which is right here. And notice this mi middle gray is not in the center, which probably means that our image is overexposed a little bit, so it should be right in the center. And then we have uh, these white values over here, and that's all the whites from the lower part of the image. So again, it's left to right, but the blacks, it doesn't matter. They don't correspond uh, left to right, just like the histogram does. Okay, now I'm gonna show you something else. I'm gonna take this shot again, this time I'm going to really look at uh, the bottom part of my calibration target and fill it almost completely with white. And I've got just a little strip of gray. When that image comes in here, you'll see that we probably have some uh, image issues. And sure enough, look at this, the white is coming in as gray instead of white. Now, if you go back to episode 26, when I was talking about exposure compensation, this is what I was referring to when I said you can look at your histogram to see if your exposure is correct. So when we look at this image, this white actually shows up right in the middle gray area on our histogram, meaning that the exposure is wrong, it's underexposed. And so we could use exposure compensation to make sure that our camera was overexposing and it would put those whites back over here where they should be, which is in the white area. Now let me show you something else. I'm gonna take another picture here of the black in the calibration target. So I'll take a shot of that. And okay, now when this comes in, we'll probably see a very, very similar result. We'll see that the blacks, instead of being down at the black end, they're sort of in the middle gray area, which is really not what we want. And absolutely, there it is. It looks like here's uh, our middle grays, which is actually black. And look at this, this middle gray area is now white. So our histogram, once again, is showing us that this image is overexposed. And so we need to underexpose that according to what the camera thinks to make our blacks actually look black. I'm going to try one more thing here and I'm going to include all three colors. I'm going to put them at a diagonal here. I'm just going to have a little bit of the white and black and there we go. So I've got that shot. I couldn't get it uh, as zoomed in as I wanted but you'll see here in a second when this pops up on the screen that we have all three values and here it is. Okay now look we have a lot less black and a lot less white than we did originally and so on the histogram you can see that there's just a little bit of black and a little bit of white and a lot of gray. And so it's showing us again, how many pixels are in the black area, how many are in the white and how many are in the gray. Now, if I had a normal picture, it would be spread across all of those values. And so you wouldn't have those clear delineations, but that's the joy of a calibration target. It can show you if your exposure is correct or not. Now you can apply this to almost anything. If I took a shot of something that was very, very bright, like a snowy scene, well, those values should be over to the right where all the white is. If they're in the middle gray area, well, the values are not correct and your exposure is off. Or if I took an image of, let's say a night scene of the moon or something where you have lots of dark values, well, your pixels should be over to the left side. You should have a very large count of dark pixels. If they're to the right, you know that your exposure isn't correct and you need to adjust using exposure compensation. So that's how you read a histogram. It's not as complicated as you seem. Uh, just get a calibration target or maybe some middle gray cards and take some shots, put them into Photoshop or Lightroom or Aperture or any application that has a histogram or even use the histogram on the back of your camera. And once you practice that and start to see how the histogram relates to your images, you'll be able to use the histogram to correct your exposure. 
Well, thanks for all the questions, everybody. I hope that helps you out learning about the histogram. Remember, if you want to know more information about the histogram or other topics about photography, you can always visit the Adorama Learning Center. They have all kinds of articles there that will help you out, as well as a full archive of every video that we've made. Well, remember, if you have a question about photography, you can always send those to me at askmark at adorama.com. Well, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.